Remember when you thought Blender couldn't do everything? Well, you're wrong because the devs have blessed us with yet another amazing update packed with even more features. I'm Remington from Southern Shoddy 3D and this is Blender 2.92 features in less than five minutes. Let's get started. Without a doubt, the star of the show is the new Geometry Nodes Editor in Blender. This new node-based system allows you to create a custom modifier to manipulate geometry through a node interface, including attributes, math, color, geometry, point scattering, and more. This feature will continue to grow in future iterations in Blender and become more powerful. For this first implementation, the focus was on point scattering, making it incredibly useful for building environments like the lush new scenes in Sprite Fright, the upcoming Blender Studio short film. However, even this early on, people are already finding unique procedural modeling techniques through this new node-based system. The point scattering can also be used to make procedural systems such as cities, trees, or other creations. The Blender community has pretty much proven that anything is possible with math and a big brain, but for us filthy casuals who only pass basic algebra, it can also be used to quickly create simple procedural animations with math nodes. As usual, minor updates have been made to the interface, and although not as flashy, it's these small updates that continue to improve Blender's user experience. New filters have been added to the outliner, properties editor synchronization, and other improvements. Not to mention the full Blender logo is now in the About dialog. So, uh, yeah, probably my favorite update. A new tool called Primitive Add has been added, a new interactive tool to create primitives in two clicks. This is great for blocking out scenes or getting started with a sculpt base. A new operator has been added to copy a single modifier to all selected objects. All I have to say is finally, thank you Eric85, you are a hero. Sculpting added a cool new grab silhouette option which allows you to manipulate the silhouette of your objects. We now have a multi-res display smear tool as well. New fall offs, invert options, deform options, and other small changes that have been made to various tools. Check out the list in the description for every detail. Apparently 3D was just too easy for Blender does because they're also becoming the best 2D animation tool as well. First up, one of the biggest new additions to Grease Pencil is that there is a new option to trace image sequences to convert to Grease Pencil Stroke, which makes this feature even cooler. This could be great for converting paper animation line work to Grease Pencil. The Google Summer of Code project for editing grease pencil strokes with curves allows you to work in a completely different way. This allows transformation of strokes using Bezier curves. And just like the last few updates, there have been several modifications to the user interface to make it more user-friendly. Notable layer onion skins are enabled by default for new layers. There's a new option to select the frame range when baking an animation. The join operator has been improved. Interpolation has been improved, making smoother animations easier to achieve with a new algorithm. You can auto-merge strokes while drawing now, and improvements have been made to the cutter tool. All the minor tweaks are making Grease Pencil more user-friendly friendly and appealing. Have you ever wished you could render faster? Well, now you can. Hybrid performance has been improved overall. But wait, there's more. You can now enable hybrid rendering for optics rendering. But wait, there's more. And optics now supports bevel and AO nodes. But wait, there's- Okay, I'll, I'll stop, sorry. I'm just, I'm really excited. Volume rendering is significantly more memory efficient by using a sparse nano VDB grid. This doesn't always mean it will render faster, but it can reduce memory usage by up to three times, so it could mean less crashes. Baking to vertex colors is also now supported. Eevee has received a massive new feature in the form of CryptoMat support. Working just like Cycles, you can now use CryptoMats, making it incredibly useful for compositing. AOV is also working the same way as Cycles now. If your computer is a potato, take comfort in knowing that Eevee continues to get better and is increasingly capable of producing final render artwork. APIC simulation methods have been added to flip simulations. The flip method creates very splashy scenes with lots of particles for smaller scale sims. This isn't always what you want. An APIC can be used in these situations to improve your simulation results. Fluids also have improved particle sampling, smaller cache file sizes, and a new method for viscosity simulation has been added. This new method makes it possible to simulate buckling, coiling, and rotating liquids. This allows for some pretty cool new simulations. I'm hoping for the community to start making more satisfying loops. Colliders can now be disabled with a toggle button, making it more animation friendly. The Euler filter has been improved, helping it to improve a wider range of discontinuities when filtering your animation, and this is incredibly useful for fixing glitches in motion capture data or tracking data. You can now turn off clean curves when baking in action, and constraints now have a custom space option, meaning you can get even fancier with your rigs while needing less bones. NLA strips now have sync length enabled, meaning that they will grow in length to accommodate for your new keyframes. Preserve volume has been fixed when using B-Bone Chains. I thought I was just bad at Blender before and weight painting, but now I can blame this instead. Rigify, FPX Importer, and Blender Kit have all seen improvements this round, and new features have been added to the Collection Manager, and I keep mentioning this add-on in these videos to try and get you to use it. It's great. Use it. I know what you're thinking. I wish my 3D software could edit video, and now it can. Video Sequence Editor has been around for a while, but it's getting a lot of focus these last few and upcoming versions with larger performance improvements, UX improvements, and more features. It's becoming a viable alternative to other video editing applications. Lastly, a new node has been added to the compositor, allowing you to adjust the exposure of images, and there's now a huge speed improvement when tracking with multiple trackers. As usual, there are hundreds of bug fixes, minor features, and improvements, which of course can be seen at the link in the description below. In the meantime, if you like what you see, go support Blender and join the development fund.